Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math P2, Variant 1, October November 2017. Let's get started. The diagram shows a quadrilateral. Find the value of x. All angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. And so in this case, we have x plus 72 plus 83 plus 104 equals 360. This gives us x equals 101 degrees. Work out 2 raised to the power negative 4 times 2 raised to the power 5. By the loss of indices, since both terms have the same base and they are multiplying, their powers are going to add. And so we have 2 raised to the power negative 4 plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is equal to 1 and 2 raised to the power 1 is equal to 2. Use a calculator to work out 5 raised to the power 0.4 minus square root of 3 divided by 0.13 minus 0.015. Write down all the digits in your calculator display. And so when we type this into the calculator, we get 1.4922011. 4041. Write your answer to part A correct to two significant figures. The second significant figure is 4. The number after 4 is 9. Since this number is greater than 5, we add 1 to 4 and ignore the rest of the numbers. And so this leaves us with a final answer of 1.5. Amber's mean mark on 5 tests is 80. Her marks on 4 of these tests are 68, 81, 74, and 89. Work out her mark on the 5th test. In this case, we need to apply the mean formula and we know that the mean is equal to sigma f of x divided by sigma f. We've been given the mean of the 5 tests as 80 and Sigma f of x represents the sum of all the five tests. And so this is 68 plus 81 plus 74 plus 89 plus x, where x represents the score on her fifth test, divided by sigma f, which represents the total number of tests Amber took. And this is 5. When we simplify the numerator of our equation, we have 80 equals 312 plus x divided by 5. When we make x the subject, we get x equals 88. Factorize completely. 12x squared plus 15xy minus 9x. The common factor for all the terms is 3x. And when we factor that out, we are left with 4x plus 5y minus 3. Since we cannot factorize this further, this will be our final answer. The diagram shows two sides of a rhombus A, B, C, D. Write down the coordinates of A. The x coordinate of A is negative 2 and the y coordinate of A is 3. Complete the rhombus on the grid. So we know that opposite sides of a rhombus are parallel and equal. So from point B, since we are moving 4 units to the right and 1 unit downward to get to point C, we can also move 4 units to the right and 1 unit downward to get the final point of the rhombus. Once we pin this final point, we can complete the rhombus by drawing two straight lines. Petra begins a journey in her car. She accelerates from rest at a constant rate of 0.4 meters per second squared for 30 seconds. She then travels at a constant speed for 40 seconds. On the grid, draw the speed time graph for the first 70 seconds of Petra's journey. So first, we've been told that Petra accelerates from rest. So this means that her starting point is at the origin where t is equal to 0 and speed is also equal to 0. The next thing we need to find is Petra's speed at t equals 30. And we can do this by using the acceleration formula, which is equal to 
speed divided by the time taken. When we make the speed the subject of the formula, we have acceleration times time. We've been given the acceleration as 0.4 and the time duration as 30. And so 0.4 times 30 gives us Petra's speed as 12 meters per second. And finally, we know that she travels at a constant speed for the remaining 40 seconds of her journey. Since her speed at t equals 30 is 12, she maintains this speed from t equals 30 to t equals 70. The diagram shows three identical cuboids in a tower. The height of one cuboid is 6.5 cm, correct to the nearest millimeter. Work out the upper bound of the height of the tower. We've been told that the height of one cuboid is 6.5 cm, correct to the nearest millimeter. And so we bring our plus and minus and divide one millimeter by two. 1 over 2 millimeters is the same as 0.05 centimeters. Since we are interested in the upper bound of the height of the cuboid, we ignore the negative and so we have 6.5 plus 0.05 centimeters and this gives us 6.55 centimeters. Therefore, the upper bound of the height of the tower will be three times the upper bound of one of the heights of the cuboid, which is 6.55 centimeters. And so this gives us our final answer as 19.65 centimeters. The value of a motorbike is $12,400. Each year, the value of the motorbike decreases exponentially by 15%. Calculate the value of the motorbike after three years. In this case, we are applying the exponential formula, where the big A represents the final value of the motorbike at the end of three years. The small A represents the initial value of the motorbike. R represents the rate of decrease and T represents the time duration in years. Since we are dealing with an exponential decrease, we have a minus here. Small a is $12,400, R is equal to 15, and T is equal to 3. And so when we slot in these values into our equation and type it into our calculator, we get the final value of the motorbike as $7,615.15 Without using a calculator, work out 1, 2 over 3 minus 11 over 15. Write down all the steps of your working and give your answer as a fraction in its lowest terms. So in the first step, we convert the mixed fraction into an improper fraction. 3 times 1 gives us 3 plus 2 gives us 5 divided by 3 and so we have 5 over 3 minus 11 over 15. The LCM of 3 and 15 is 15 and so 3 goes into 15 5 times multiplied by the numerator which is 5 gives us 25 minus 15 goes into 15 1 time multiplied by the numerator which is 11 and so 1 times 11 gives us 11. 25 minus 11 gives us 14 divided by 15. This cannot be simplified further. And so our final answer remains as 14 over 15. The diagram shows a regular pentagon. AB is a line of symmetry. Work out the value of D. D is an interior angle in the pentagon. And we know the formula for finding an interior angle in any regular polygon as theta equals 180 times n minus 2 divided by n, where n represents the number of sides of the regular polygon. In this case, we are dealing with a pentagon, and so n is equal to 5. Theta, which represents the size of one of the interior angles, is equal to 2 times d. Because remember that AB is a line of symmetry, and so if we've been given one half of the angle as d, then it means that the other half is also equal to d. And so this gives us 2d is equal to 
180 times 5 minus 2 divided by 5. And this simplifies to give us the value of D as equal to 54. From this list of numbers, write down a cube number. 343 is a cube number because 7 cubed gives us 343. Write down the smallest number. So looking at the list of numbers, the smallest of them all is negative 11. Write down a natural number. A natural number is the same as a counting number and so that will be 343. Simplify. M raised to the power 5 or raised to the power 2. So by the lots of indices, the powers of M will multiply. And so this gives us M raised to the power 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And so we have our final answer as M raised to the power 10. Simplify 4x cubed y times 5x squared y. 4 times 5 gives us 20. The powers of x are going to add, and so we have x raised to the power 3 plus 2. And the powers of y are also going to add up to give y raised to the power 1 plus 1. 3 plus 2 gives us 5, 1 plus 1 gives us 2. And so our final answer becomes 20x raised to the power 5, y raised to the power 2. D is the point 2, negative 5, and vector DE is equal to 7, 1. Find the coordinates of the point E. The x coordinate of point E will be 2 plus 7, giving us 9, and the y coordinate of E will be negative 5 plus 1, giving us negative 4. V is equal to T12. And the magnitude of V is equal to 13. Work out the value of T where T is negative. If the magnitude of the vector V is equal to 13, and we know that the magnitude of V is also equal to square root of T squared plus 12 squared. When we square both sides of the equation, we have T squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. When we make t squared the subject, we have t squared is equal to 13 squared minus 12 squared. 13 squared minus 12 squared is equal to 25. And so when we take square root of both sides of the equation, we have t is equal to plus and minus the square root of 25. We've been told that the value of t is negative, and so we are going to ignore the positive and have our final answer for t being equal to negative 5. q is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Write down set p, where p is a subset of q. If p is a subset of q, then it means that p is going to contain the same elements as set q, only that the number of elements in set p will be fewer than the elements in set q. So for set p, you can write anything along the lines of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, or in this case, I wrote 1, 2, 3. Shade these regions in the Venn diagrams, M union and complement. So in other words, we are shading the regions in set M or not in N. And when we do that, this is how the shaded region is supposed to look like. Shade A union B intersection C complement. So in other words, we are shading the region in set A or B and at the same time not in C. If we just shade the region in set A or set B, this is what we are going to have. But if this region is not supposed to be in set C, then this is what the final shaded region is supposed to look like. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. When we look at both triangles A and B, we can straight away tell that this is an enlargement by a scale factor of 1 over 3. The next thing is to find the center of enlargement. Let's connect at least two corresponding points on both triangles A and B. 
After drawing these lines, the intersection points will be the center of enlargement. And in this case, we have that as 2, 1. And so the full description will be enlargement by a scale factor of 1 over 3 about the center 2, 1. Y is inversely proportional to x plus 1 squared. Y is equal to 50 when x is equal to 0 0.2. Write y in terms of x. So in mathematical terms, we are going to write y is inversely proportional to x plus 1 squared. This means that y is equal to a constant which we are going to call k divided by x plus 1 squared. So now we need to find the value of k. And we can do that by substituting the values of x and y given in the question into our equation. And so this gives us 50 is equal to k divided by 0 0.2 plus 1 squared. When we make k the subject, we have 50 times 0 0.2 plus 1 squared, which gives us k is equal to 72. So for our final equation, we have y is equal to 72 divided by x plus 1 squared. Find the value of y when x is equal to 0 0.5. So all we need to do is substitute the value of x in the equation we found in the previous question. And so we have y is equal to 72 divided by 0 0.5 plus 1 squared. When we type this into the calculator, we get 32. The diagram shows a scale drawing of Tarek's garden. The scale is 1 cm, represents 2 meters. Tarek puts a statue in the garden. The statue is equidistant from the two trees and 10 meters from the bed bath. Find by construction the point where Tariq puts the statue. Label the point S. Okay, so there are two conditions for which Tariq puts his statue in his garden. The first is that the statue is equidistant from the two trees. And so we are going to draw a line connecting the two trees. And then we draw a perpendicular bisector for this line. The second condition is that the statue is 10 meters from the bed bath. Using the scale given in the question, 10 meters in his garden is equal to 2 centimeters on the scale drawing. So by opening your compass to 5 centimeters apart, draw a circle around the bed bath. The intersection point of the line and the circle is where Tariq puts his statue. And so we are going to label this point S. Write as a single fraction in its simplest form. 5 over x minus 3 plus 3 over x plus 7 plus 1 over 2. So in this case, we can get our LCM by multiplying the denominators. And so that gives us 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. X minus 3 goes into the LCM and we are left with 2 times X plus 7, which multiplies the numerator 5 and gives us 10 times X plus 7. X plus 7 goes into the LCM and we are left with 2 times X minus 3, which multiplies the numerator 3, giving us 6 times X minus 3. 2 goes into the LCM and we are left with x minus 3 times x plus 7, which multiplies the numerator 1, giving us x minus 3 times x plus 7. When we expand the brackets, 10 times x gives us 10x, 10 times 7 gives us 70. 6 times x is 6x, 6, 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 x times x is x squared, x times 7 is 7x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So 7x minus 3x gives us 4x. Then we have negative 3 times 7 giving us negative 21, divided by 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. So by grouping like terms, we have x squared and 10x plus 6x plus 4x giving us 20x and 
70 minus 18 minus 21 given us 31 divided by 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. And so our final answer is x squared plus 20x plus 31 divided by 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 7. A cylinder has height 20 centimeters. The area of the circular cross section is 74 centimeters squared. Work out the volume of this cylinder. So since we've been given the area of the cross section of the cylinder, we are going to use the formula volume is equal to the area of the cross section times the height. We know that the area of the cross section is 74 centimeters squared and the height has been given as 20 centimeters. And so 74 times 20 gives us 1480 centimeters cubed. Cylinder A is mathematically similar to cylinder B. The height of cylinder A is 10 centimeters and its surface area is 440 centimeters squared. The surface area of cylinder B is 3960 centimeters squared. Calculate the height of cylinder B. And so let's set up our ratio. Since we are dealing with area, we need to square our length or our linear scale factor. From our ratio, we can set up the equation big H squared divided by big A is equal to small h squared divided by small a. Since we are finding the height of cylinder B, we are going to make big H the subject and that will be equal to square root of small h squared times big A divided by small a. Small h is equal to 10, big A is equal to 3960 and small a is equal to 440. And so we have square root of 10 squared times 3960 divided by 440. When we type this into the calculator, we get the height of cylinder B as 30 centimeters. The diagram shows a square based pyramid A, B, C, D, E. The diagonals of the square meet at M. E is vertically above M. AB is equal to BC is equal to 12 centimeters and EM is equal to 9 centimeters. Calculate the angle between the edge EC and the base ABCD of the pyramid. On the diagram, we have labeled the angle we are required to find as alpha. And we can apply Sokatoa to find the value of alpha. And so this gives us tan alpha is equal to EM divided by MC. We know that EM is equal to 9 centimeters. The length of MC has not been given directly in the question, but we know that MC is equal to half of AC. And so when we rearrange the equation, we get tan alpha is equal to 2 times EM divided by AC. We can find the length of AC using the Pythagoras theorem. And so this gives us AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. AB is equal to 12 centimeters and BC is also equal to 12 centimeters. And so AC is equal to the square root of 12 squared plus 12 squared centimeters. And this gives us square root of 288 centimeters. So now we have alpha as tan inverse of 2 times 9 centimeters divided by square root of 288 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get alpha is equal to 46.7 degrees, correct to one decimal place. Simon records the height h centimeters of 200 sunflowers in his garden. The cumulative frequency diagram shows this information. Find the number of these sunflowers that have a height of more than 160 centimeters. When we map 160 centimeters to our cumulative frequency diagram, we have 120. And so the number of these sunflowers will be equal to 200 minus 120, giving us 80. 
Sue records the height h centimeters of 200 sunflowers in her garden. The cumulative frequency table shows this information. On the grid above, draw another cumulative frequency diagram to show this information. So on the cumulative frequency diagram, we are going to map the points 100, 0, 110, 20, 120, 48, 130, 100, 140, 140, 150, 172, 160, 188, 170, 200. When we are done, we draw a smooth line passing through all these points. Work out the difference between the median heights of Simon's sunflowers and Sue's sunflowers. So from the graph, the median of Simon's sunflowers is 156 and the median of Sue's sunflowers is 130. And so the difference of the median height, which is 156 minus 130, gives us 26 centimeters. In one week, Neha spends X hours cooking and Y hours cleaning. The time she spends cleaning is at least equal to the time she spends cooking. This can be written as Y is greater than and equal to X. She spends no more than 16 hours in total cooking and cleaning. She spends at least 4 hours cooking. Write down two more inequalities in X and or Y to show this information. And so for the first inequality, the total of cooking and cleaning will be represented by X plus Y. And since she spends no more than 16 hours in total cooking and cleaning, X plus Y will be less than and equal to 16. For the second inequality, Cooking is represented by X, and since she spends at least 4 hours cooking, we have X is greater than and equal to 4. Complete the diagram to show the three inequalities. Shade the unwanted regions. So for the three inequalities, we need to draw the lines y is equal to x, x plus y is equal to 16, and x is equal to 4. The line y is equal to x has already been drawn for us. So we need to draw the lines x is equal to 4 and x plus y is equal to 16. For the first inequality, since we have y is greater than and equal to x, then it means that the wanted region is above the line y is equal to x. And so the unwanted region will be below the line y is equal to x. And this has already been shaded. For the second inequality, since we have x plus y is less than and equal to 16, it means that the wanted region is below the line x plus y is equal to 16. And so we are going to shade the region above the line x plus y is equal to 16. For the third and final inequality, we have x is greater than and equal to 4. And so this means that the wanted region is to the right of the line x is equal to 4. And so we are going to shade the region to the left of x is equal to 4. Neha receives $10 for each hour she spends cooking and $8 for each hour she spends cleaning. Work out the largest amount she could receive. So to do this, we are going to use the vertices of the wanted region and these are 412, 88 and 44. The total amount Neha can receive can be represented by the equation 10 times the number of hours she spends cooking, which is X, plus 8 times the number of hours she spends cleaning, which is Y. And so we have 10X plus 8Y. For the first point, we have 10 times 4 plus 8 times 12, giving us $136. For the second point, we have 10 times 8 plus 8 times 8, giving us 144. And for the final point, we have 10 times 4 plus 8 times 4, giving us 72. And so looking at the three total values we have, the largest amount that Neha can receive is $144. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.